Hi everybody, this is Arkady Freckman. I'm a personal injury attorney here in New York City, and today I wanted to talk about greed. It's mine, you understand? Mine, all mine! And how greed can prevent you from receiving the maximum compensation that you are entitled to. So a client calls me from another state and he gets hit by a commercial tow truck and he has serious life-changing injuries, including a traumatic brain injury and a shoulder tear requiring surgery. So the client calls a large law firm that advertises and says they have excellent million dollar results and trial attorneys. So he calls them and he speaks to the receptionist who answers the phone and he asks, who is the best lawyer for my case? Do you know this lawyer? Can you give me the best lawyer for my case? And the receptionist says, yes, yeah, sure, it's Matthew Smith, and gives him this lawyer. And so months go by, and he has this lawyer, and he thinks everything is fine. And then he finds out this lawyer doesn't even work for that law firm. It just so happens that the receptionist is friendly with this lawyer, Matthew Smith, and now this guy, you know, somehow was able to steal this case over from this other large firm. And when the client asked me to do a review of Matthew Smith, his lawyer, who's a solo practitioner, with some interesting you know, ties or interesting connections, I find out this guy has never done a jury trial. He has no settlements listed either in any of the research databases. Also, what does it say about the original firm, right? That their team members know the firm so well that they're gonna say, this firm isn't good, this firm can't help you. So it really goes to the issue of greed and how does greed play a role in choosing your attorney or why do attorneys focus on greed rather than doing what's best for their client and it's really like one of those cartoons where you know you see the little person and he sees something like um a diamond and it's the biggest diamond they've ever seen and he becomes hypnotized and he's just like i want it i want it i have to have it but you can't touch that diamond if you touch the diamond the whole the whole place is going to explode right everyone's going to die <laughs> Even driving to work today, I saw a billboard on the highway and the billboard says, get paid for pain, right? So he's actually advertising this to people. Hey, if you have pain, you can get paid. And he wants to get paid, the lawyer wants to get paid. But it's not about getting paid for pain, it's rather about all of the harms and losses, right? What was taken away through negligence. Nobody asked for this, nobody wants to get hurt, nobody wants to have a life-changing forever injury. People just wanna live their life and pursue happiness, right? It really goes in a lot of different ways when you're, when you're dealing with a personal injury case. Lawyers sometimes settle a case short. They settle a case maybe quickly, but they get much less than the case is truly worth. If you were to work up that case, if you were to spend the right time, spend the right money, that case could become a three or four million dollar case. But sure, you could sell a $3 million case short and get maybe $300,000 now, and the lawyer collects a $100,000 legal fee and the client still gets $200,000 in their pocket, which is a lot of money, but it could be a $3 million case, right? Or a $6 million case. And then it's a completely different. Then the client is getting $4 million in their pocket, right? If it's a $6 million case. And then there was another story from a client who had a serious construction accident. And what happened to him was he thought that he hired a lawyer and a law firm in Manhattan. He hired them and they were supposed to be handling his case. But for whatever reason, I guess that lawyer didn't know how to handle complex construction cases. So the lawyer made a side deal, an under the table deal with one of his buddies. So the buddy was handling the case, kind of like moonlighting from his job because the buddy was actually a defense lawyer who worked at an insurance defense law firm and you know, was getting paid by this law firm representing insurance carriers. And so the client kept saying, well, who's this other guy? Who's this other guy? And then finally he confronted the, the, the law firm he hired and they had to admit it. They said, yes. And so while it may be okay, because if the main lawyer doesn't know how to handle construction cases and this insurance defense guy does know how to handle them because he's been defending them for 20 years, you might be okay on the issue of liability or fault. But what about when you get to damages? This insurance defense guy spent his whole career defending insurance companies, which is paying injury plaintiffs as little as possible and saving money for insurance companies, right? 
paying out as little as possible. But then here, it's the exact opposite. This guy had life-changing forever injuries. He's married, he has kids, his life has been completely changed both with economic damages like lost wages and future medical expenses as well as the human damages like loss of enjoyment of life and pain and suffering. But this insurance defense guy never went to his house, never asked him anything about who he loves or what he loves to do, his passions, how this has affected him or his family in any way. So he's just going to present the case in the cookie cutter, old school, boring style and probably get much less money as compared to somebody who would really take the time to get to know him and build out a whole biography and think about all the implications, right? How did this damage not just him, but his, him and his wife, the marriage, the, the family, the friends, the coworkers, the neighbors, how did this damage his life, right, globally? So that's very important to do. So when you're considering hiring an attorney, always think about getting full justice. I spoke to somebody earlier today and I said, look, what we want to do is we want to put you in a power position because this particular client said, look, I don't want to go to trial. I want to settle my case. And I said, look, that's fine. But to settle your case, what you need to do is prepare for trial. If you prepare for trial and you show the insurance company, look, we did everything. Everything is done. We're in a position of strength. At this point, you have to pay us X. And if you don't pay us X, which could be a high number that we agree upon, like a million dollars, if you don't pay us that, fine, then we're gonna go to trial. But guess what? At trial, we're gonna ask for Y, and Y is double or triple X, right? If, if we're asking for a million now as a settlement, then at trial, it's gonna be two or three million. And so, but the only way you can do that is if you prepare the case for trial, and that's how you get full justice. So you have to consider all of these different factors but the important thing is you have to set greed aside and do what's best for the client. And I think the only way to really truly do that is if you're passionate about it and you have it in your heart and you wanna help people and this is what you love to do, which is something I feel. So I hope uh, this was helpful and uh, I hope clients make the right decision because it's your life and it's very important to make the right decision and get the best possible justice, full justice for your case.